If you know me at all, you'll know that I barely know how to make scrambled eggs. So, knowing that, the only logical thing to do is to try to make one of the fanciest French dishes ever, Blanquette de Veau. <laughs> is French for veal stew. It originated in the 19th century in France and was originally created to make the use of leftover veal. I'm not even gonna try to list all the ingredients, so here's a scrolling list from the cookbook. Before we begin today's video, I'd like to thank a few people. First is my dad's friend Brian, who is a professional chef. He recommended this recipe provided the shots of the cookbook and helped me throughout the entire process, so a huge thank you to him. The other person I'd like to thank is my friend Burb Goral, or you slash puppy puppy Debbie. She made this incredible fan art for me. I mean, just look at it. It's crazy. I'm going to be making this the logo for the Asylum Discord server. Speaking of which, please go to the link is in the description. If you do enjoy the video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing it helps out too. Also hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Make sure to stick around to the end to see how the Blanquette Devo turns out. And with those words, I unknowingly got myself into something that would take 10 and a half hours to cook, 15 hours to edit, and caused a lot of stress. Because veal isn't super accessible where I live, Brian suggested using pork instead. This is, according to the label, pork shoulder country style ribs. I laid it out on my cutting board, started cutting it into one inch cubes and removing the fat. The piles got bigger and bigger and bigger. That's the last piece right there. I then poured a mixture of half water, half milk in with the pork. And then I threw a lid on and I put it in the fridge overnight. In the morning, I took it out of the fridge to find that the milk and water had turned into a pink liquid, which looks a lot like pink milk until you realize it's not pink milk and it's pork, milk, and water. I drained it using a strainer, and then I put it in a pot. Weird. I filled the pot up with water just above the pork, which I believe was around six cups or so. It, it was a lot since this is a really big pot. Maybe it was four. I'm, I'm really not sure. Anyway, I then boiled it for about 10 minutes. But this is called blanching, and it removes the stuff you don't want from the pork, like all the bad stuff on it. By the end, the top was just covered in this weird tan foam. I took it off heat, and then I drained it right here, and then I put it in an ice bath. By the time I had looked up and fully understood what an ice bath was, the pork was probably too cooled off for it to have been effective. I then had to stem and peel the mushrooms. And let me tell you, peeling mushrooms is the most boring and tedious thing I've ever had to do. I started out using a knife like the first video said to do, but then I realized I was cutting way too much off. So I looked up another technique, and this one involved peeling it with your fingers from the bottom. Overall, not fun. Then, I cut off the white of the leek, or rather cut off the green of the leek, because I was going to use the white. Those things are tough. Then, I learned how to use a vegetable peeler, and I peeled a stalk of celery. Which, I don't know, that was not fun to clean up. Then, I peeled a carrot. Up until recently, I had no idea that was a thing people did. I then cut an onion in half, and I stuttered it. This means to take a bay leaf, put it on top of the onion, and then just straight shove a clove through it. It was fun. This process is meant to dampen the intense bad flavor of cloves. For some reason, I was tapping it, and it just kind of broke. I then added all of this to a medium-sized pot, along with a bouquet garni, which is thyme, parsley, a bay leaf, and black peppercorn wrapped in a leek leaf. That's the, that's the bouquet garni. I then added all of the pork, and I seasoned with salt. I filled the pot with water a few centimeters above the vegetables. The carrot was too tall, so I had to bend it. I boiled the water, and then I simmered it for 45 minutes. As it turns out, all these vegetables I bought were for infusion of flavor only, so rest in peace my bank account. I started removing the pork from the pot with a spoon, but quickly realized that tongs would be a better option. Also, this carrot is now permanently in the shape of an L. Then, I poured the remaining water, which had turned into a white pork stock, into a separate pot. I began to boil it. Uh, Stirred a little bit up, I don't know why I did that. I added a white roux that I had made, but I couldn't find a clip of me making it. And then I simmered it. It wasn't thickening and I was getting extremely frustrated, so I decided to call it a night and pick up in the morning. Thank you to my parents for packing up everything. In the morning, I poured the rest of my white pork stock through a mesh thing into a pot. I boiled it, and while it was doing that, I made another roux. The roux was just some butter and some flour. On my first attempt, I accidentally added, like, all of my butter instead of the amount in the recipe. That's true. I don't know, it seemed to be going pretty well, though. That's the flour that I added. It was about a fourth cup. 
then I stirred it up, then it looked a lot like this. It's more yellow than I wanted it to be. I transferred it to a separate dish to cool. While that was cooling, I decided to make the side dish, the rice pilaf. By the way, that's actually spelled R-I-Z-P-I-L-A-F, but it's still made with rice. I used a technique I had discovered to dice the onion, by cutting in a cross pattern and then cutting sideways. It's really satisfying. If you do have problems dicing onions, I recommend this. The onion fell apart while I was doing this, so it took a lot longer than it should have. See, right here, that little chunk falls off so I had to break it apart. I then added some butter to a pot and melted it. Uh, I then added all of the diced onions and I sweated it, whatever that means. Probably doing it wrong because I don't know exactly what it means. I transferred it between two pots after realizing the first was too big, and, sorry, the first was too small and the other was too big. I then poured all of my rice, which made a very satisfying sound, and stirred it up a bit, and I added some water, and I brought it to medium-high heat. Stirred it up a little bit, and yeah. While that was happening, I made a, another bouquet garni. Not exactly sure what this one's for, but it's a nice touch, I guess. I added my black peppercorn, and then my bay leaf. And then I figured out I couldn't wrap it in that small leaf, so I transferred it all to a bigger leaf. I'm gonna scrape it all in. Uh, then I added the cold roux to the sauce, which wasn't exactly roux blanc, more like roux yellow. I whisked it up a bit. And then I threw the rice pilaf into the oven for 17 minutes, which was all the specific. I thought it would be like 15 to 20 minutes. That's kind of how vague the cookbook's been thus far. While that was happening, I whisked in the roux. It still wasn't thickening, so I just decided to let it reduce. I took some pearl onions and peeled them. They're very annoying to peel because of how small they were. I took some heavy cream and I poured it into the sauce. Immediately after doing this, I realized it was almost double what I needed. Although I didn't get it on film, I added a ton of seasoning and some butter to counter the flavor and, made, and make it more salty and savory. In the background, I'm adding water to my pearl onions in a pan. In the pan is water, butter, sugar, and of course pearl onions. This process is called glossara blanc, which means just, which I think means just glazing them. I put a lid over them. The sugar, water, and butter wasn't turning into a glaze, so my mom helped me by removing the olive liquid. Then I added a little bit of butter, a little bit of water, and then like double the sugar in the recipe. I cut a lemon in half and squeezed out the juices into the bowl using one of those clamping things. They're fun to use. And then melted some butter in a pot. There's a lot of butter in this recipe. Added the lemon juice, the mushrooms, uh, and some salt and pepper. Weirdly rhythmical way. Then I threw a lid on it. I cooked it for five minutes. The mushrooms looked very different after I took the lid off. I drained it using another one of the mesh things. I dad, my, my dad then helped me to remove the skins from the pearl onions that I had missed. It was a lot easier to peel them after they had been cooked and turned up. My dad then showed me how to separate the yolk of an egg from the white, and I put two egg yolks into a bowl. I added some heavy cream to the yolks right about here was uh, what was supposed to be the remaining heavy cream if I had measured correctly. And then I whisked. I had to break that one annually. Um, and then I added a ladle of the sauce to the egg yolks. And I whisked that together. Right here. And then I added the mixture to the sauce. I'm not sure exactly what it's for. Whisk it in here. And then I added some salt and pepper in an even more weirdly rhythmical way. And then I threw in the mushrooms. And the pearl onions. And, wait, meatballs? So I realized about a half hour before this clip that I left my pork out for too long, and I didn't feel safe adding potentially bad meat to the Blanquette de Veau. So now all those vegetables I bought were doubly a waste. This was the moment I had been waiting for since I began this project three days prior. The moment of truth. I was actually serving it. My plating is horrible, but my mom got a good picture of her dish that she plated. And that just so happens to be the thumbnail of this video. Also, the camera fell into the sauce. I tasted it. Meatball. Mushroom 
mushrooms and then an onion and mm. it was absolutely fantastic i loved it it was the most flavorful thing i had ever eaten before the sauce was savory and salty not too salty though the meatballs added a nice touch the sweetness of the pearl onion counterbalanced the savory flavor of everything else and the lemon juice and juiced mushrooms added a nice tang the rice pilaf just tasted like rice so nothing much to talk about there my mom said it was the best sauce she had ever had. Not joking. So was all the stress, frustration, and time worth it? That depends on how many views this video gets. Just kidding. It was definitely worth it. I made some delicious food, had a blast editing, and I learned a lot. If I were to do this again, I would have paid a bit more attention to the recipe, and also maybe have had a friend over to help. I want to thank you all so much for sticking around to the end. This video took me probably more than 24 hours in actual time spent working to create. So if you enjoyed, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. It helps out a ton. Also join the Discord to play with bots and do polls and stuff. Again, thank you so much to Brian for suggesting this and helping me the entire way. Anyway, I'll see you all later. Bye. Oh boy, before you go, Purple Dice is a video coming up four days from now, so be sure to check that out. Okay, bye.